today we will be learning about the history of effective altruism. The history of EA is actually a pretty fascinating story. Within a couple of decades, EA went from a few students and Yopros throwing around ideas to a major cultural force with tens of thousands of community members, billions of dollars of funding, conferences, incubators, and even cryptocurrency fraud. Hello, I am Robot Voice 9000. I will be narrating the rest of this video because recording audio takes forever and this is much easier. In 1971, Australian philosopher Peter Singer wrote an essay called Famine, Affluence, and Morality, which argued that we should all be donating much more to help the global poor. Rather than buying luxuries, we could literally save lives. So not donating is a bit like walking past a shallow pond and seeing a child drowning, but not wading in to rescue it because you don't want to get your nice clothes muddy. In 1984, Oxford philosopher Derek Parfit wrote a long and difficult book called Reasons and Persons, which made the following argument. It will take about a billion years for the Earth to become uninhabitable, so there could be tens of thousands of billions of people in the future. So if humanity were to prematurely go extinct, this could be the greatest moral tragedy imaginable. In 2003, the J-PAL lab opened at MIT. It was part of the randomista movement in economics in which the effect of global health and poverty interventions were rigorously measured with randomized controlled trials. From 2006 to 2009, Elias Yudkowsky wrote daily essays to convince the world that advanced AI was eventually going to kill us all. These essays became known as the sequences. In 2007, Holden Karnofsky and Elie Hassenfeld quit their hedge fund jobs to start GiveWell, a nonprofit that rigorously evaluates which charities save the most lives per dollar. It turns out that for the most effective charities, it costs about $5,000 to save a life on average. From 2008 to 2012, there was a utilitarianism forum called Philosophia, where many of the people who would go on to become effective altruists met and discussed ethics. In 2009, Oxford philosopher Toby Ord decided to donate a large portion of his income to effective charities. He then started the Giving What We Can pledge for others to pledge to also donate 10% of their incomes to the most effective charities. The pledge had 64 signups in the first year, and the total pledged amount was estimated to be $21 million. Okay, due to time constraints, we'll no longer be doing these pop-up visuals. To make up for it, this blue guy will now do a flip. In 2011, Oxford students Ben Todd and Will McCaskill researched and gave presentations on how to do as much good as you can with your career. With some encouragement, they founded the nonprofit 80,000 Hours, to give career advice to young people who want to do good with their career. In 2012, Oxford philosopher Nick Bostrom wrote the paper Existential Risk Prevention as a Global Priority, in which he extended Derek Parfit's discussion about existential risks. If we colonize the reachable universe, Bostrom argued, and emulated human brains on more efficient computer substrate, then there could be an incredible 10 to 42 future people. We should therefore be putting much more effort into making sure pandemics, nuclear war, or other technologies don't kill us. Also in 2012, the Center for Effective Altruism, or CEA, was founded by Will McCaskill and Toby Ord as an umbrella organization for 80,000 hours and giving what we can. This was the first time the phrase effective altruism was officially used. Initially, CEA could only afford to pay its 12 staff members £15,000 per year and rent a one-room office in an estate agent's basement. In 2013, Peter Singer gave a popular TED Talk on effective altruism. In 2014, GiveWell partnered with Kerry Tuna and Dustin Moskowitz to found a new grant-making organization called Open Philanthropy. Moskowitz is the billionaire co-founder of Facebook and Asana. Him and his wife, Kari Tuna, aim to give the majority of their fortune away within their lifetime. The upshot of all this was that all of a sudden, billions of dollars started flowing to EA causes. Also in 2014, Nick Bostrom wrote the best-selling book Superintelligence, Paths, Dangers, Strategies, which developed and popularized the arguments about the dangers of AI that Yudkowsky had been arguing. In 2015, EA had its first conference. The first Effective Altruism Global, or EAG, was in San Francisco and included Elon Musk as a speaker. Since then, CEA has hosted several EAG conferences every year, 
which include networking and lectures. In 2015, Will McCaskill published Doing Good Better, The Manifesto of Effective Altruism. In 2018, the news outlet Vox started Future Perfect, a column on effective altruism. Also in 2018, Marcus Davis and Peter Wildeford founded Rethink Priorities, a think tank for effective altruism, which researches animal welfare, the future of humanity, global health and development, and EA community demographics. Finally, in 2018, Joey Savoy and Carolina Sarek founded a charity startup incubator called Charity Entrepreneurship. In 2019, Sam Bankman-Fried, a.k.a. SBF, founded FTX, a cryptocurrency exchange and hedge fund. SBF claims to have been inspired from talk to Will McCaskill to pursue a so-called earning-to-give strategy in which he would make as much money as possible and give it to effective charities. FTX became the third largest cryptocurrency exchange in the world, and SBF became a billionaire and the world's richest person under 30. In 2020, One Day Sooner was founded to accelerate COVID-19 vaccine development by representing challenge trial volunteers. Challenge trials are when fit, healthy people deliberately infect themselves to test vaccine effectiveness. One Day Sooner got over 38,000 signups and subsequently expanded to other challenge studies, pandemic preparedness policy, and vaccine equity. Later that year, Toby Ord published The Precipice, which further expanded on Bostrom's discussion of existential risks. Ord estimated a one in six chance of humanity going extinct over the next century. In March 2022, FTX announced the Future Fund, which gave over $100 million to EA causes. In August 2022, Will McEskill published his second book called What We Owe the Future, in which he attempted to popularize long-termism. Long-termism is the idea that a key moral priority of our time is making sure the long-term future of humanity goes well. And in November 2022, just eight months after the FTX Future Fund was announced, it came to light that FTX had been misusing customer funds. This triggered a run on the bank and ultimately to FTX declaring bankruptcy and billions of dollars of customer funds disappearing. SBF has since been convicted for a number of felonies. So there you have it. What a crazy sequence of stuff to have happened. Bye-bye now.